What is up my god gamers and welcome back for another video. In today's guide we are going to go through all of the synergies in TFT set 9 to try to get you guys set up for success at the beginning of the set because this set is very overwhelming. Now I'm not going to talk about everything in these synergies because if I did the video would be five hours long. I have separate videos for pretty much everything in TFT so if you find this video helpful make sure to just click on my channel and go look at the guide section. I, I bet you'll uh, find what you're looking for there. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through each of the synergies. I'm just going to read it verbatim what it does and then um, and kind of like you know just really what it does and then go through each of the units within the synergies and uh, tell you their role within uh, the traits. Now, this is not a composition guide. This is not a unit guide. Uh, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of baseline in this video with the traits. So, with that out of the way, let's start with the most confusing trait of them all, Darken. <laughs> it's not a good place to start, but it's the first one alphabetically, I guess. So, here we go. Um, this is Aatrox's unique trait. So, I think the language in this <laughs> paragraph makes it confusing, and that, I, but I played a lot of them, and I think I understand them now. Uh, when Aatrox or the holder of the Darkened Blade dies, Aatrox is the holder of the Darkened Blade when combat starts. Uh, the Darkened Blade is equipped to the nearest allied champion, granting him 500, granting them 500 health and 20% Omni Vamp. After being equipped to a champion for four seconds, Aatrox will revive upon their death instead. Um, the word instead is what makes this really confusing, I think, because it's like, well, what would it do if he didn't die? What's it instead? Instead of what? It, it implies that it, they don't get this buff. Um, the instead, they just need to delete the instead, and I think this will be far less confusing. Let me just tell you what it does. You want to put Aatrox next to your frontline carry unit or your tankiest unit, and you want him to die early on in the fight. Even if you're carrying him, you want him to be positioned to take damage early on in the fight because he'll get a lot of damage off even if you're putting carry items on. Even if he's taking damage, he'll get a lot of damage off, and then he'll res back up and uh, will do a lot of stuff. So you want him to put you want to put him next to your tankiest unit, and you want him to take damage so that he will revive. Um, also, additionally, you can instead put him next to a carry so that they gain the 500 health in Omni Vamp. For example, if you're carrying a Yasuo, maybe put your Aatrox next to your Yasuo and have your Aatrox die. It goes onto your Yasuo. Yasuo does a lot of work. Then Yasuo dies. Then Aatrox comes back to life and finishes the fight. So that's how it works. If they do not survive for four seconds, all that happens is they get this buff and then nobody gets revived. That is how it happens. I did it. I just tested it uh, because this is confusing the word instead. <laughs> but yeah, they need to delete this word and then I think it'll be far less confusing. Okay, Demacia. Uh, during the planning phase, your strongest Demacians become elite and equip a random radiant item for the next combat. Elites grant armor and magic resist to themselves and adjacent allies, but this does not stack. Um, so you don't have to stack all the elites on top of each other, that sort of thing. And then here we are. Radiant items are uh, upgraded versions of completed items, if you didn't know. This energy at 3579. And some of these numbers will change throughout the set. That's just how they usually do balancing. But uh, they'll probably be uh, probably be like this on launch. So you get one elite and the elites, remember, they get the radiant items. The way that it prioritizes who is elite, I believe it's starred up. So if your unit is upgraded and then the unit with the most items. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing that. So if you're like carrying a Lux and you're playing a Jarvan um, as well, and you only have one item uh, on your Lux, and you have one item on your Jarvan, it, it sometimes can like pick the other one and pick the other one. It's a little weird. I think it has something to do with how many synergies you put in there. Just be mindful of that, that if you put two items on your Jarvan, it'll automatically go to him now instead of your Lux. If you only had one item on your Lux and you probably want the Radiant item on your Lux most likely in this situation. So uh, within this uh, synergy, this is something you can play as a vertical. Um, meaning you can play all the way from seven to nine, like start the game with Kale. That's a common strategy when playing this. Again, this is not a comp guide, so I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but that is a common strategy to put to play Kale and then go vertical into nine or go vertical into seven and then play around your Lux and your Jarvan and your Kale having the um, Radiant items. Um, that's usually how you play it. Additionally, uh, uh, most of the time I play it, I'm running three elites and I'm playing a Lux comp and I just get the Radiant item on my Lux. Or if I get three super good items, I'll do a Radiant item on my Jarvan. All good to go. Um, within this trait, uh, Sona is a support unit, can be a carry within the multicaster build, like a side carry. She's typically not the main carry. Um, Poppy is a tank, 
and do some weird carry stuff in Yordle builds sometimes. Lux is purely a carry, but sometimes you'll run her as an off carry in other builds because she does have a little bit of utility built in. It just does some nice damage even without items. Kale is a carry. That's all she does. Uh, Jarvan is the best unit in the game. Um, if you want to know more about that, check out my best unit in the game video. It's a pretty short video. Um, he's the best unit in the game. He is a CC tank. Um, Garen is a carry. That's all he does. Um, or a synergy bot for Juggernaut. And Galio is a tank and does a little bit of decent damage. Um, I imagine on one patch there might be a carry uh, Galio build that, we, that we'll see happen. Um, I think he has his own augment, so maybe if you get his augment, maybe he can carry. He's kind of like Swain in that way. He's a little bit of a raid boss. Okay, next up is Freljord, and this is one of the best traits in the game, and I have a whole video on the best traits in the game that you can run in a lot of things, so check that out. I'm, I'm going to keep doing plugs throughout this video because why not? It's my channel. It's my video. I can do what I want. All right. Uh, Frail Yord. After five seconds, an ice storm strikes the battlefield. Enemies take a percentage of their magic, magic maximum health as true damage and gain debuffs for 15 seconds. The most important thing you need to know about is the debuffs. The debuffs are the most important part. So let's just read the debuffs here. At two, 5% health, enemies are sundered and shredded by 40%, which if you don't know what that means, that means their armor and magic resist are reduced. That's why this is one of the best traits in the game because if you're playing a magic damage build and you don't have a shiv or a spark, or you're playing an AD build and you don't have a last whisper, boom, toss in frail yard, call it a day. Um, and then at three, it's 50% mana reefed. That's pretty good. It mana reeves them, um, which makes their mana cost higher. And then at four, it does everything that we stated already, but it additionally will stun their entire team for one and a half seconds. So you can see it's already so good. And within this, all of these units are pretty much utility units. Sejuani's one of the premier tanks in the game. Her and Shin are the premier tanks in the four cost category. And then Lissandra is a really good uh, utility unit, but additionally can carry within the invoker build. Um, a lot of people will run her as a early game and mid game carry, and then we'll kind of transition to better carry units within the invoker tree, um, but she is pretty good. Um, and Ash is purely utility um, within Deadeye and Freljord. She probably can have a carry patch out there, but mostly she'll be a, a utility unit. Very good unit. Okay, Ionia. Every four seconds, your strongest Ionians are enlightened um, to their spirit form and gain 20 mana. Each Ionian has a unique bonus within their ability, which doubles when in spirit form. I don't have all of these memorized, so I won't tell you. I, I can't tell you all their Ionia bonuses. Uh, I have some of them memorized, uh, but you know I'll try my best. Okay, so at three, 100% in Ionia bonus, um, plus in the Ionia bonus... Um, is uh the mana and um and their and their form so um one of them will be enlightened and it's random it'll kind of rotate uh every four seconds at 200 percent, it's two i two enlightened and at nine it's 300 percent and three enlightened so again these are randomly rotating so you can't just like guarantee it's going to be on your yasso if you're carrying your yasso it'll just kind of bounce between them a lot and so i'll try to remember all the enlightened bonuses but again i don't know zed it's bonus critical strike and critical strike damage you also it's omnivamp shin it's uh damage reduction set i don't know i think it's probably health arma is ap a bonus ap Jin is bonus ad irelia is i don't know maybe some damage reduction and ari is uh she gains three mana um every second so within this build uh, Zed is a carry. Yasuo is a carry. Shin is one of the premier tanks, uh, with, along with Sejuani. Set is a tank, um, and has good utility. He has CC. Uh, you can carry him if you get his augment, uh, called the Baus. Um, Karma is a carry. She doesn't really do anything else. Jin is a carry. Irelia is a tank. I can imagine there's probably going to be some patches where she can be tank slash carry. She does have some damage built built into her kit and some naturally tankiness. Ari is good utility as well as a really good carry if you can get the right setup. I love playing Ari, one of my favorite units. Okay, Noxus. Noxus units gain health, ability power, and attack damage. This is increased by 10% for each different opponent that, you, that either you have conquered in combat, meaning you beat them, or is dead. And um, yeah, so remember 10% of this, and you keep it the whole game. So like if you end up beating somebody and then you lose to them later, you don't lose the buff, you just have to have beaten them. I believe that's how it works. Um, and so at three, you can see the stats there. Six with stats are there. And then nine, the stats there. Um, within this build, we have Swain, who is a can be a carry if you get his augment, but mostly he's just mainly a tank and a little bit of extra damage in the Sork build. Uh, Scion is a tank, utility, and damage dealer. Depends on how you itemize him, but he has really good CC and uh, can deal a lot of damage. Samira is purely a, a DPS. Kled is purely a DPS. 
Katarina is purely a DPS, but she does have a healing reduction in her kit. So you can play her for a little bit of utility there, a little bit. Darius is purely a damage dealer, but he's very tanky with his Juggernaut trait. Cassiopeia is a DPS, but has a good utility as well because she does have healing reduction within her kit. So you can already see within the Noxian tree, you have two healing reduction champions. So you usually have to build healing reduction in this build if you want to uh, you know, play three, six, or nine, as long as you can fit one of those units in there and you're good to go. Um, all right, Piltover. Uh, gain a T-Hex. Every time you lose a player combat, the T-Hex gains charges. Winning converts the charges to power for the T-Hex. Uh, you may sell the T-Hex if it has any power, um, resetting the T-Hex and converting its power to loot. Um, so yeah, if that was confusing, every time you lose, you gain a little, you gain a little blue charge. And then whenever you win, that blue charge converts to gold charge. And the gold charge is what actually gives your T-Hex more damage. Starring up units also increases uh, the tankiness of your T-Hex. Um, T-Hex can be a carry. He's very powerful. And also it can be very tanky. Um, so at three, you gain the T-Hex. At six, each loss counts as two losses instead. Winning grants bonus loot. And so uh, you... You can play this vertical the whole game if you want your T-Hex to be part of your whole team, be part of your team the whole game. You don't ever have to sell them and your T-Hex can pop off. There's there's plenty of Piltover builds where T-Hex is the leading damage dealer or second leading damage dealer. It's very strong. Um, but additionally, you can just run this as an econ trait. So this is like the econ trait of this set. So a lot of times when I run it, I'll just run the T-Hex as long as I want. And then as soon as I'm done playing Piltover, I'll sell it. Uh, important to note, if you take Piltover out, um, it doesn't like auto sell it. Uh, so if you take if you take Piltover out and you forget to sell your T-Hex, you will not get the buff. Don't worry, it doesn't go away. Like your T-Hex stacks don't go away. So if you forget and then you remember, you just got to put the T-Hex, you got to put the Piltover units in for a second, sell the T-Hex and then take the Piltover units out. You don't have to play another combat with them, but just you need to remember to sell your T-Hex if you're going to get off a of Piltover. Um, and so within the Piltover tree, Vi is a tank. There'll probably be a patch where she can kind of carry, but probably not. Uh, Oriana is a utility unit mainly, but she does do a little bit of damage. Uh, Jace is... Uh, he kind of does it all. He's in my video of some of the best units in the set. He uh, gives an a, he gives an attack speed buff like a Zeke's uh, to his allies, but also can deal some decent damage. Heimerdinger, he he does it all. He's a legendary unit. He's CC. He's damage. Uh, you know, if you you can upgrade his turrets a lot, and they can do everything. Uh, Echo is a DPS. That's pretty much all he does. Um, all right, Shadow Isles. After dealing or receiving damage eight times, Shadow Isles units. Gain a shield for eight seconds and become spectral for the rest of combat. Spectral units gain a mana every second. Um, and as we see, we have a two, four, and six synergy within this. Diego is a DPS. That's all he does. Senna is a DPS and utility unit. Her, her ability is very good um, and very good, especially if you're playing a lot of Shadow Isles. Maokai is a tank. That's all he does. Callista is a DPS. And Gwen is also a DPS, but has some tanky stuff built in there, but she is a DPS. Um, so she is a carry within this build. All right, and Shirima. Every four seconds, Shiriman's heal 7% max health. Every eight seconds, select Shiriman, uh, select Shiriman, ascend, and gain 20% max health and 50% um, attack speed. All right, as we can see here at three, it's the strongest Shiriman. So the strongest will be denoted by their star level and how many items they have. And I think if they all have the same items, it's just how many of their traits you have active. Um, so, you know, just consider that. At five, it's all Shuriman's. At seven, also ascend at the start of combat. So they don't even have to wait. Um, and at nine, plus 50% ascension bonus. Within the tree, Talia is a utility unit. She has uh, one of the very few units in the early game that has CC, uh, but she can also be a DPS within the multicaster build. Renekton is a tank, but I imagine there'll probably be a patch where you reroll him and he can be a decent damage dealer. Uh, Nazus is a tank as well as a damage dealer. He has a little bit of utility as well because he gives big suck. Uh, he sucks the enemy's uh, 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 stats, and so he can be a little bit utility in that way. Gasante is uh, is a CC champ. Um, you you will not want to itemize him as carry. Um, he is a CC champ. He is like Lee Sin from set four. He can kick units off the board. Um, Cassiopeia, we already talked about her. And Azir, he is a DPS, but he has decent utility because Strategist is a, is a very strong utility trait, one of the best traits in the game, but primarily is the main DPS of this build. And then Akshan is a DPS. That's all that he does. Okay, Targon. 
Uh, your shielding and healing is increased at two, 18% increased healing and shielding at three, 25% increased healing and shielding. And at four, um, it just increases it over time. You get the idea. Tarek is a tank. That's what he does. Uh, Soraka is a utility and DPS. She heals your units, but as well as can do a lot of damage. Depending on the patch, you can itemize her like the damage deal, like a damage dealer, or just not put items on her and just you know get some big heals. Aphelios is a DPS. That's all he does. Um, all right, Void. Uh, get a placeable Void egg at the start of combat. It hatches into an unspeakable horror. Knocks up <laughs> adjacent enemies just like that. Um, each Void star level increases the horror's health and ability power by twenty five percent. At three, we have a little void lane. At six, it's a Rift Herald. And at eight, the Baron Nashur. Um, the Baron is very strong. <laughs> okay, uh, this is probably the easiest opener in the game to play because you just play the two bruisers plus one. Um, but we'll talk more about openers in a different video. All right, Velkaz is a DPS. That's all he does. Um, Rek'Sai is a DPS and can be a tank, whatever. Um, Malzahar is a DPS, but also has a little bit of utility because he shreds shields. Uh, Casa Win is a tank and has good utility because he's, um, he, you know, he's tanky and, uh, can disarm. Kai'Sa is a DPS. That's all she does. Cho'Gath is a tank, but also can deal some decent damage. And there's definitely going to be some reroll builds out there for Cho'Gath. And Belveth is a DPS. That's all she does. All right. Wanderer. Wonder spells change depending on the region portal uh, region portal players voted uh, for at the start of the game. So every, each portal has a different effect for Rise. I'm not going to go through all of them. Just when you play Rise, just right click him and read what he does. He does. He basically has every ability in the game. Just think about that. He has DPS. He's utility. He's CC. Like he does it all. Um, and each portal is different. <laughs> and I don't have them memorized. Okay, Zon. Uh, Zon champions create random Kim mods that only they can use. Champions can be modded once, and mods can only be removed by selling the champions. So once you put it on there, it's there unless you sell them. Um, and the mods are pretty random whenever you... There's a finite amount of the mods, but you don't know which one they're going to be until you put them in. Um, so at two, you gain one. At four, you gain two. And at six, you gain three. And you overcharge the mods. The mods... If, so if you play six, there's a, an additional overcharge effect under the mod. So just... Pete, look at it in the tooltip whenever you're playing the game. If you get six in, you'll see that. Um, and you can put multiple mods on the same unit. So we have Zeri. She's the DPS of this comp. Warwick is a tank and he has CC. So tank and utility. But also there will definitely be some carry builds out there right at the time we make this video. He is the worst itemized carry in the game, um, <laughs> according to the stats. Urgot is a um, tank and DPS. So he kind of does both. Jinx, purely DPS. Echo, purely DPS. All right, now we're at the classes. Bastion is one of the premier tank classes. Bastion champions gain armor and magic resist. This is increased by 100% for the first 10 seconds of combat. Um, and so as you can see, as you scale up, um, it increases the amount of defenses. So this is kind of like the Vanguard class or the, you know, that, that sort of type of class. Um, um, here we go. And we got Tarek. We already talked about him. Tank and utility. Shin, the premier, one of the premier tanks. We already talked about Poppy, already talked about this guy, already talked about this guy, already talked about this guy. You know what's nice whenever we go through the first section is when we get to the second section, we've already talked about all the champs. Very cool. Okay, Bruiser. Um, your units gain 100 health. Bruisers get even more. Um, and so as you can see here, two, four, and six, it scales up pretty well and pretty big threshold at six right there. But honestly, six is pretty dog doo-doo um, unless you have like some emblems or something like that because you really don't want to be playing... Renekton on your Renekton and Vi on your in-game board. You know what I'm saying? Um, never feels good. And we already talked about all the units at Challenger. Challengers gain a uh, bonus attack speed. When their target dies, challengers dash to a new target and increase their attack speed by 50% for two and a half seconds. Uh, so if you played in past sets, this was a very similar effect to challengers and past sets. And as you see, it just scales up as you go here. And we already talked about all the units, so we're good to go. All right, at Deadeye, um, innate gain a bonus range. Cool. Um, every three seconds, Dead Eyes attack the enemy uh, with the highest percent health and deal bonus damage. Um, so it's like a little, you'll see it's like a little proc. It will deal some damage. At the time we make this video, this trait is not that great, um, but it could be. Um, and so we have two, four, and six. It just scales with damage. And we already talked about all the units here, so we're good to go. Empress is Belvis' unique um, trait. And this is what makes Belvis such a good unit here, or such a good carry uh, whenever you want to play her. So when Belvis kills an enemy, they leave behind a void coral um, that she will consume. The first coral increases her max health by 50%. What, what it'll look like in the game, she kind of like slaps the ground and she's like, oh. 
<laughs> and she kind of does that. Um, and she gets all big. While further corals heal her for 20% max health. So she'll start healing after that. When a void coral um, is consumed, she deals 10% max health as magic damage to enemies within two hexes. So she is an AD champion, but she has a little bit of magic damage in there because she's just, she just slaps people around. It's, it's pretty fun watching her play. Um, okay, Gunner. When Gunner champions attack, they gain bonus attack damage up to eight stacks um, at two, four, and six. It just increases over time. And we already talked about all the units there. At Invokers, allies restore mana every three seconds this is one of my favorite traits in the game and it's in my best traits video um at two five manas for all allies at four this is when you start getting some really good stuff but you got to make sure if you run four um it's going you're actually going to be putting items on some of your invokers because the big big buff is for your invokers an additional 10 mana for invokers i believe these numbers are different right now and then at six uh six can be really powerful especially if you have emblems and the augments that go with invokers because it's 10 for all allies, an additional 15 for invokers. So you're just casting like crazy. And I'll just give you a little bit of tip. If you want to play invokers, you don't build mana items on your invokers. So if you wouldn't want to build Sojin on your uh, Soraka, despite it you know, looking good in the stats or, or whatever, or it seems good, you'd want to just go full AP, full damage. You know, you want to go full raw stats, right? And we already talked about all the units here, so we're good to go. And the Juggernaut, I love this trait. This trait's so much fun. Juggernaut champions take less damage as their health decreases. So um, two, um, we have damage reduction. So they'll start with 10% and then it'll scale with 20 is the 20% is the maximum. I don't know what the threshold is. It probably is like 30% health or below 50% health. Um, so it just scales up as you go. And we already talked about all the units here. We're good to go. All right, multicasters. Multicasters cast their ability multiple times. Bonus cast have 50% reduced effectiveness. So this will reduce the damage and the effectiveness of their debuff because a lot of these units have debuffs like Teemo um, and Sona has a buff. Uh, so it'll reduce it, do, reduce that there. At the time you're making this video, this is one of the most broken builds and I'm sure it'll be nerfed. Um, they are going to be doing some balance changes soon. So uh, we have two, we'll get one extra cast and at four, we get two extra cast. Okay, Redeemer. This is Senna's unique trait. I love Senna. Uh, whenever an ally gains a shield, grant them 7% stacking attack speed for the rest of combat. So every time they gain a shield, they'll gain 7% attack speed. And what's really cool about Senna is Senna creates a shield with her ability and Shadow Isles, which she is a Shadow Isle, um, also naturally creates shields. So just having her on your board and playing units that gain shields, she doesn't even have to shield them. They'll gain the buff. It's really cool. Um, okay, rogues. Rogues are the are the assassins of this uh, of this set now they don't jump like assassins they don't have innates they don't jump at the beginning of the fight they'll jump at a different time and we'll read right here the first time rogues fall below a certain percentage of health um they briefly become untargetable and dash towards an enemy within four hexes preferably backliner so it will prefer squishy units um at four um additionally attacking an enemy for the first time causes them the enemy to bleed for five seconds so let's read this at two it's below 50 percent they'll jump and at four and they, they will still jump at four um, apply additional bleed dealing 50% of the enemy max health. So if you've played assassins in the past, you probably know about assassin positioning where you put them on the second to last row or the back row, or you put them all the way in your back row and you put your tanks in the second to last row like on your team. You don't, you don't frontline your tanks. You don't do that this time because they don't jump at the beginning of the fight. You just position them like you position like normal. You put them on the front line because they need to take damage in order to jump. You typically want your um, your damage dealer on the same side as their damage dealer because like for example if you're carrying Zed Zed takes damage and you're playing versus a Zeri then after Zed takes damage if Zeri's within range he'll jump to Zeri but if he's on the other other side he'll jump to the other back line so you want him to jump to their carry right cool as uh, Slayer Slayers gain 15% Omni Vamp additionally Slayers deal damage uh, deal bonus damage doubled against units below 60% health um, cool. So right here, it just scales up two, three, four, five, six. So it's one of those ones you could just keep adding on top of it. You just have to get the two trait active and after you go on it, just if you're looking at this as a vertical trait, just pay attention to the thresholds. There's a big buff at four. The buff is way bigger at four than a buff from three. That's the biggest buff at at the time you make this video other than going to six as a chase trait. Um, but just keep in mind with that with the balance changes, how that will play out. And we already talked about all the units there. Sork, um, Sork's one of my favorite traits here. Uh, when Sorks help kill an enemy, they trigger an arcane shock that deals a percent of the enemy's maximum health to other enemies. Sorks also gain a bonus ability power. I think this is a unique spin on the like sorcerer class that is always in every set. Um, I think this is neat. Um, so at two, it's ability power in a plus to 10% health. And remember, it's the enemy's health, not the, not your health. 
um, and then it just scales up as you go. But the biggest one you need to look at is at the sixth threshold. That's when you get the big buff. Um, 75 uh, ability power, shock two enemies. So it, rather than one, it shocks two when you kill them. Um, and then the buff is a lot smaller at eight. Going eight, I played eight sorks. It felt like a big bait. I mean, you get, do get a lot of upfront power, but usually you want to not play eight sorks. You just want to get to the six threshold if you want to play the vertical. You do not have to play the vertical, but if you can get the six active with emblems and that sort of thing, it is quite potent. Um, but yeah, so if you get, this is a build that's very good with emblems. Um, and we already talked about all the units here. Strategist, which is my favorite trait in the game. Um, combat start, allies in the front two rows gain a shield for eight seconds. Allies in the back two rows gain ability power. This is one of those traits you can play in every single build, even if you're playing AD. Doesn't mean that you will, but you always get value because of the shield. And also AD units can use AP. They don't use it very well anymore. They used to use it a lot better, but... Uh, Mort Dog has done some good good work in making uh, AD units not have way better scaling than AP units. Very cool. Um, all right, at two, um, you know, we gain a shield and ability power. You know, it just scales up as you go. And then we already talked about all the units here. All right, Techno Genius. Okay, gain a placeable Apex turret with three upgrade slots. Upgrades to Apex turrets will show up in your shop for six gold. You may only have one Apex turret. So you'll start seeing upgrades in your shop once you put Heimerdinger on your board. So just be very mindful. This is what he's one of the best units in the game. But just be mindful whenever you place him on your board, you will one of your shops can now be taken up by that upgrade. So if you really need upgraded units, you probably don't want them on your board when you're rolling. I don't think you can just take them off your board while you're rolling and it'll switch it. Maybe you can. I think after he's in combat, um, if he was in combat the previous round, it will roll for the upgrades. Um, they will appear in your shop and they cost six gold. And so some of the, I don't have them all memorized, but some of the upgrades, uh, like you get um shred uh like sunder and and shred in there uh, so if you need that you can get that for free there uh, you can get healing reduction in there you can get some bonus damage you can get these rockets that pop out um so there's a bunch of stuff you can get goldenator which you can get like a which if it's kind of like works like collector you have a chance to execute um units uh, and you gain gold for that so one of the one of the best units in the game you pretty much play him in every single board if he can fit and them yaddles yaddles um allies gain 10 percent attack speed per star level uh yordles can become four star gaining a wacky spell upgrade i don't have all the spell upgrades memorized i haven't i literally haven't played this comp i don't play a lot of reroll builds um uh, ties and terms are are broken by the yordle fielded most recently Honestly, I don't really know how that works. I have not played a lot of this build, but you can four-star your units. Um, this is a reroll build. If you have three three-star champions, your strongest three-star Yordle champion becomes a four-star. Uh, at five, your three-star Yordle champions can now become, two of them can now become four-star. So there you go. I've never played this build in my life, uh, so I can't really speak on how on a lot of the stuff. I, I know what Poppy's does. Poppy does her ult from League. She bounces them in the air and then uh, they land down. Hers is really good. I honestly couldn't tell you the other ones. I, I just don't even know. But anyways, guys, that is all the traits. I thought this video would be a lot longer. A lot of times when I go through these, these type of videos are an hour long. Um, but uh, I forgot, you know, once we go through the first section, it makes the second section a lot easier. But guys, if you found this video helpful, uh, make sure and check out my other guides that I have here. Um, I'll be pumping these out all set and uh yeah we're uh we're having a good time we're loving the set so far and uh i hope hope you guys are gonna have a good time with the set and i hope uh be part of your journey to be part of uh helping you guys climb up and helping you guys get started if you're new playing the game uh, i think that'll be really cool and it's very rewarding to me um so if you guys want to support me hey the best way you can support me you know subscribe to my youtube channel but but i'm really trying to grow my twitch so if you guys like watching live streams guys i'm really handsome i'm entertaining i'm good at the game i'm I'm actually going for rank one this year. We'll see if we can do it. I don't know. I don't know. I've never hit that rank. I've never been that high, but we're going to try. And if you want to be part of that journey, click the link below in the pinned comment and follow me on Twitch. Um, I would love to see you there. All right, I'm done begging. Appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Good luck.